All right, boys and girls, it is the Friday Nightcap, and we have got another stellar group here tonight. My MSNBC colleague and friend, Alicia Menendez, host of American Voices, every weekend at 6 p.m. Steve Leisman is here just back from vacation. CNBC senior economics reporter Basil Smeichel is with us, Democratic strategist and former executive director of the New York State Democratic Party, an actor, comedian, and former correspondent for The Daily Show, Asif Manvi, on his first visit to the nightcap. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Steve, you have been on vacation, so I'm going to start with you okay. and the debt ceiling, right? Over this okay. week, they're getting closer. They're getting further away. They're pausing. Kevin McCarthy doesn't like how the right, White House right. is posturing. Walk us through where you think we really are, and are they making progress? Is this just a ridiculous stance to annoy us? Okay, well, first, I just want to comment on what you guys did for the second time. You've had the economics reporter on and the comedian, which Here's is excellent counter-programming, which gives the perfect... <laughs> Leave to just be serious for a bit, and then they can be counter-programmed by, by Asim over there. There you go. So here's what I think. This is a bit like, for me, Charlie Brown and Lucy in the football, right? Because um, I've covered this like 11 times, and I get very serious about it. I say, here are the economic effects of the, the default, and it never happens. But and I am Lucy, refusing this time. This time is Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she doesn't care if They're Charlie breaks his leg. probably more serious about it this time, but I have to think in the end they do not allow the american government and its finances to default so where are we now today the republicans walked out um it could be just more hijinks they need to get their act together to bring this i know the way wall street is kind of betting this thing and they're betting this thing the way i am which is they refuse to be charlie brown and step up and get with you know do another whiff at the football that lucy's going to pull away at the final minute that's where they're at now. You <clears throat> can't say it's right. You could be right that Marjorie Taylor Greene comes along and makes this into a serious or more serious thing. Neither has the votes. I want to make one point about this. The You've reason, already made four points. I'm sorry about that. Um, we, the reason we are where we are is because the people who are trying to enforce their budgetary ideas cannot get it done through a normal Democratic majority process through the regular budgetary process. So essentially where we are here is a minority trying to enforce their own views on spending on the majority. Yeah, isn't, well, it just, isn't just a way for the Republicans to just force their agenda, right? They're just basically, I mean, they're just taking... Well, they've not got even, an opportunity. Not even all of it's a minority of Republicans, right? but right? they just want to take away funding for... Poor, poor and marginalized people. They want to make it poor. harder for poor and marginalized people to access yeah, programs right. like SNAP, like Medicaid, right. by adding all of these employment... In, uh, right. Instead stations. of taxing the 1%. And that's why, it's, if you center the voter in all of this, what does the voter see? What the voter sees is a group of people who don't want to do their job and an administration that does want to be at the table and wants to do their job. Does every a, voter see, see that? Because a lot uh, of voters see all government officials just not getting oh, the job done. Let's be clear. Congress <laughs> and the administration have the worst polling that we've seen in probably our history. But to, to some of your points, if you look at what the Republicans are doing, I mean, McCarthy is there but for Marjorie Taylor Greene or anybody else, right? He could lose his majority, he could lose his speakership at the drop of a hat. So if you're Joe Biden, who are you really negotiating with? You, mm -hmm. you, there is no body on the other side to really negotiate it, but you probably got to go to Mitch McConnell to do that. And, okay, and, and, because and Mitch McConnell, point. he's got big, fat, rich Wall Street donors yeah. calling him every day yeah. saying, saying, you got to get this thing worked exactly out. Exactly right. I just want to make a point. The idea of stopping and thinking about whether or not government spending is too high is not crazy. This is a it's great point. It's $32 trillion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We run a very mm -hmm. large deficit. So I would like to express some sympathy with those people, and I believe there are some on both sides. I think there ought to be some thinking about the level of spending in government. I don't believe this is the correct form, the correct democratic form to make it happen. And I don't believe the idea of simply cutting spending is the only answer. There's revenue and there's spending, and those two need to come more together. The idea behind it is not crazy. I just think the means are the wrong ones. Do you want to respond to that? Because that's no, a really I, good point. Just, we actually, spend an awful lot of money here. Well, I not think Obama we're going to not to spend more than we make. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but you do really anyway. Basic... But, but we yes, do anyway. it is. But yeah, we, we do, do anyway. anyway. And, and I actually agree with a lot of what you said, but I go back to my earlier point, because what does the voter see? The voter feels in my view, that what is at stake here are all those programs, all that spending that actually I think is for good reason that is now being held up by the Republican Party. If Joe Biden comes to the table and says, look, I'm willing to cut spending, which he did say, 
He said, I'm willing to cut spending, but at the end of the day, you guys got to come to me with something, and that's just not happening. So I, I think what the voter is saying, like, look, how many times are you going to bring us to the brink of bankruptcy? How many times am I going to have to plan with my family to not have money for you all to wake up and do something? And whoever actually comes and says, whoever blinks first, if you will, to use that term, whoever blinks first, I think is going to be the beneficiary of, of uh, the voter saying, OK, these guys know what they're doing. But Lisa, isn't it, isn't it that really just they keep saying, you know, OK, we'll come to the table, uh, we'll cut spending, but the spending they want to cut is the spending that's going to affect the poor and marginalized pe communities. That is the spending that they... And this is their agenda all along. You know, that's, that's really what they want to do. And so they're shoving that agenda into this. I mean, the Republicans have, have raised the debt ceiling 49 times since 1960. Three times under Trump, yeah. without yeah, limits. And they, yeah, exactly, and without yeah. limits. So, so it's all kind of just hypocrisy on their part. You know, surprise, surprise. My Politics concern, though, to echo something that you're saying, is that I do think there is the possibility that voters look at this and they say, pox on both your houses, that some of the nuance of how we got here gets lost. Yeah, and who then stands, stands to lose more? Right? When the right. summer comes, let's say these negotiations fail, and let's say the economy is spiraling is the average voter who might not even be able to tell you the name of the Speaker of the House or the Vice President, are they going to be able to say it was Republicans or are they going to say, who's in the White House? Look at my 401k. Yeah. And sucks. let me add to your ifs there, if President Biden doesn't invoke the 14th Amendment, which it seems is just too legally complicated yeah, and risky. Let's be clear to our and audience, and I want you to explain this. The 14th Amendment isn't just like, oh, there's the third option. Let's go there. No. It's a whole other level. It's complicated. I I'm in favor of the 14th Amendment. I think we ought to treat the 14th Amendment with the reverence that some people treat the Second Amendment. It's written there. It says you're not supposed to mess around with the government debt. You shouldn't call it into question. I think Biden ought to do it. Get rid of this pox on the House of Government and finance and make both sides do what they should do in the budgetary process and stop these hijinks. We don't need to live this way. We have enough problems. There's a 60% probability of a recession. There's a big problem in Ukraine and Russia. There's all kinds of issues out there. Let's get rid of the man-made problems, the ones, because there could be a hurricane, there could be a flood. You can't do anything about those things. This thing you can do something about, let's get rid of it. But isn't this a deflection? I mean, because let's face it, the average voter does not know what the hell we're talking about. You know, like, I mean, most people, I didn't know much about this until I met you. And then you explained it all to me. Downstairs. Them. Downstairs. And you, you explained this whole thing to me here. downstairs. Right. Yeah. The so, but I do think and most voters know. understand because every one of us has bills and those bills come yeah, due yeah, so and we just, pay them and we understand that part of it. And so to answer your fundamental question about who it is then they point the finger at, if... If we are entering a scenario, which I really hope we are not entering, where we are for the first time to default, we're not paying out the loans that are due, we all know. And we're looking at economic backslide. We're looking at economic growth, job growth mm -hmm. that has moved in a positive direction, potentially moving to losses in the millions, right? It's hard to overstate just how dramatic this is going to be. I mean, Democrats are going to go out there and they're going to say, I need you to understand what was at stake, the things they wanted cut. I think the challenge for Democrats is that Republicans, especially a lot of these faux populists that we're talking about, their whole argument is the government can't work. Right. The government doesn't right. work. They the government can't system. deliver. Well, right. And so gonna, chaos will always benefit them. Right. They're going to place at the feet of, of Biden, right? And so the Democrats are going to suffer for this because, and, and the Democrats are going to go out there and be like, let's try to understand the nuance of how oh. this works. And, but and, what is and the, the what is there they're as trying the, to destroy America. But what is their alternative? But what is their alternative? As the, 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 the Democrat at the table, I would say, look, if you look at 2022... I know you're going to try to talk sense. No, you're no, going to try I, to talk sense. Because I'm, that's and it's not going to work because no, the people no, out there... No, no, it's, it's, okay, go ahead. It's, go it's, ahead. But it's more than that. Because in 2022, I don't think voters really held Biden accountable for inflation. If they had, we would have we would have suffered a lot worse losses, quite frankly. So if you pick up on that, if you if you use that as sort of the floor, what has happened since then? Biden and Hakeem Jeffries and the Democrats have spoken with one voice in unison. That makes sense to a voter. On the other side, what do you have? You have a guy who was flailed in an attempt to get his seat, who cannot speak. Kevin McCarthy. Collect Kevin McCarthy. I'm sorry. Yes, the speaker. Mm -hmm. Um, who, who is leading a party that just cannot get their act together with the Marjorie Taylor Greens and, and everybody else that's sort of looking in, trying to pull him apart without a, con, a, a, a strong agenda. Whereas the Democrats do have that. They have a strong policy agenda that Biden 
can talk about. So my point in saying this is that the average voter, to your question, is looking at one party that is speaking with one voice and another party that has multiple voices that make no sense. All right, I, I want to talk about the Republican. I uh -oh, that who uh -oh. thought the debt ceiling was going to be this hot, and Asif Manvi was going to be so <laughs> erudite. And I, 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 I want you to go thank to one you, of your thank, club thank issues. To this guy. I want you to get up there and, and do a bit on the debt ceiling. <laughs> you yeah, know what? On. It would be hot. People that would love would that on a Friday night. That's right. People right, I want to talk about other voters. Okay. I want to talk about Republican voters, right? Because now we've got Tim Scott's jumping in, Ron DeSantis next week. Mm. We're expecting he's going to be running. Nikki Haley's in the mix. Do any one of these potential candidates have the goods? To overtake Trump. Oh God! You had a lot I, to I, say I, until I, that. I, <laughs> Look, he had a I lot mean, to I say think, on the debt ceiling. I mean, Ron DeSantis maybe does because I think he's actually even more of an extremist, and and you know he 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 is he's more Machiavellian than Trump mm. is. You know, Trump I think is just sort of out there spinning plates, and 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 DeSantis I think has an agenda, and you know. You know, it, it's even the fight with Disney that he's having right now. It's very, it, it's very calculated to a base, and it's very okay. But who is that base, Steve? This Disney fight, okay? The most recent now, Disney is saying, "Go fish." We're going to pull a billion-dollar project mm -hmm. out of your state. What voter is saying right on? I mean, the fact that Ron DeSantis, what was it, ten years ago, got married at Disney World? Right. I'm like, and right. now here you are. I, like, well, I don't I even know. Everything, I think everything you need to know about Ron DeSantis <laughs> is in the fact that he got married at Disney World. <laughs> he is still angry about how much the turkey legs. Cost. I was going to say, if he can't beat Mickey Mouse and Goofy, how is he going to meet Trump? That was my, the question that I was going to make. But, well, they're awesome. But, a lot of people would vote I for know, them. I know, I would vote for them. But, but here's, here's the thing: it seems to me that the more DeSantis moves to the right to secure the Republican base, the less appealing he becomes to the rest of the country oh, and even uh, parts of the Republican Party. And, and, and maybe I'm making more of this, but that, that, that mayoral election in Jacksonville mm -hmm. might have been a bellwether for, for what's happening and what, Didn't what the Didn't you say that about is. Trump? Wasn't that the same argument for Trump, that the more you know, he moves towards that fringe element... The less attractive he is. And, you know and the thing about Trump? I always felt that if he didn't exist, he would have been created. Because there was a, there were voters. Maybe he was. There were voters. <laughs> there were uh, you know, there were there was a part of America that needed him to run for president. Right. And it's the thing I don't believe about Ron DeSantis. I do think he's a very scary individual because he knows how to pull the levers of bureaucratic power to get things done. When you have a governor getting involved in school board elections, that's actually pretty scary. But uh, the but model he's also, Donald Trump broke was his superpower, which is shamelessness. Right, we've, his we've, we've, shamelessness right. has given us George Santos and Marjorie right. Taylor Greene, yeah. where, where there's nothing to apologize he's, for, no matter how humiliating. He's neutralized guilt in our country. And the, 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 my feeling is that there is presidential campaigns about creating social political movements. I don't know that Ron DeSantis does that, but Donald Trump certainly has done that. So I don't see where... I think he'll be competitive, but the question is, can Ron DeSantis take a vote from Donald Trump, or can he win back disaffected Republicans that supported Democrats in 2022? I don't know if any of those things are happening. You're a strategic person, so you're asking the right question, which is, <laughs> who, who is this fight with Disney supposed to bring into the Ron DeSantis? And I can answer it for you, which is that Republicans during the Trump years looked at the inroads that they made with white working-class voters, and they made a decision to pit themselves against corporations. Don't white working-class voters like going to Disney World? I've been there. Mm -hmm. And isn't Disney the largest single site employer in the entire world? I mean, you're talking about a lot of jobs, a lot. But I think it would be one thing if Ron DeSantis were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Disney over workers' rights, if you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe to Disney with Disney over tax breaks. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Disney over an ideological stance yeah. on whether or not you should be able to talk about gender identity in a classroom. And the irony is, this Florida. is with Disney. This is not yeah. like, Disney is not the left wing angel. You know what I mean? They are one of the most conservative corporations. So you are an extremist if you, you can't are even fighting... have a tattoo or a double ear pierce if you want yeah, to work Yeah, yeah, you can't bike. even have facial hair. Or, you know, for a long time. You the... would know. I, I would know. <laughs> I would know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if you're, you might be an extremist if you are pitting yourself against Disney and they're pulling out money out of the state of Florida because, because you're too extreme for Disney, you know, so. I think that's, you put your, your finger on something, which is that there's really nobody around to defend Disney. 
Is the left going to get up? Is yeah. the Democrats going to get up and defend Disney? They're not. So but does Bob got, Iger need you know, someone? Like, like, they either. don't need to be defended. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? They got the Little Mermaid coming out, and everybody's going to go see it. Yeah. But isn't that also the uh, maybe not the primary Republican voter, but the general election Republican voter? Because going after this massive employer is very unrepublican like in my mm -hmm. opinion, right? So, I, that, so to but, your point but, but, about not being a good general election. But the point candidate, earlier about the extent to which Republicans are now willing to take on corporations when they exercise the rights that Republicans used to think corporations had to make decisions about what they were going to do. Um, and uh, uh, right now, uh, they have no qualms about taking on corporations. I think that's a great point. But it makes no sense. Do you want because to do that there as a aren't, but, but let's just, no, who cares? Here's the thing. <laughs> there are really woke <laughs> corporations, companies want to sell products, mm -hmm. they want to keep their employees employed, and they don't want their shareholders coming after them. They don't have any heart, with, with the exception of a few businesses here and there, they don't have any big ideology. They just want to make money. So the, even this whole idea that we've got these woke corporations to go after, that's nonsense. Is there, are there really millions and millions of Republican voters that are like, yeah, let's do that? Yeah. Well, I think it's because of what it's about. I, I, I think you, you, you hit the nail on the head. If it was about workers' rights, or anything, but it's about the word gay. And so you, you, you hang it on that and suddenly Disney now, Disney becomes the woke corporation. Mm -hmm.